Good afternoon folks, Mark here and welcome to the sofa. I was a little short on inspiration this time, so I dug about in my box of fancy resin pieces and found Pan, an old McVeigh Studios model that I never got around to painting. I've got some ideas rattling around, I've got the model, and I've got a piece of wood. So, why not join me at the painting table and let's get started. Right, where did I get to back then? Apparently Pan is mostly prepped, that's a bonus. Even drilled his foot for a pin. Ah, and I appear to have messed up the fairy's wings. Plays into my hands a bit there. Good job, past me. Although first, I need to turn this plank into a plinth. Which, of course, I have to do manually. Hooray! I like the look of the knot, so I cut up to that for the bottom and then angled the top. Plan to have a pool of water at the front, which meant carving it all down with a convenient rotary tool. And a chisel, because I didn't have all year. And a drill. Good grief, this was harder than I thought. Eventually, and with only minor damage to the surrounding area, I got it roughed out enough to fix the scenic base for Pan in place. With a few wood shavings to level it off, it turns out. After all that, I needed to paint something. But first, a very delicate bit of pinning, using a sharpened 0.4mm wire and a fair amount of luck. Nice long wing supports, back in place, and much harder to snap. As soon as I could, I got him primed, with some white airbrushed around the fairy to help with lighting. Then I had to throw on a rough layer of flesh to get things started. The smart thing would be to paint the details on any flesh that would be exposed, then go across the whole body layer by layer, building up the fur texture. You probably won't be surprised then to see me paint random areas out of sequence. I did at least start with the face and horns, even if I got distracted.
After a bit, I looped back to the chest and gave it more flesh detail before working more fur over it. I like painting fur. It looks complicated, but it's not about precision. The more uneven, the better, really. I was going for a changing seasons look to the whole piece, and with Pan being more wintry, the fairy would be summer. Initially, I spent some time trying for an internally lit green glow. Which looked really bad like she had a spring onion on her back. So I switched to a green tinted flesh and blonde hair that I was much happier with. Then I could shade the fur down and bring it back up with a bunch of patchy colours to add life. Around the fairy, that involved pale greens, along with extra glazes to liven her up as well. On the rest of the fur, that included some blue tints, because I still wanted him to feel colder. I kept some desaturated brown in the longer fur though to break the shapes up. And now the final touches, which as we all know, take much longer than we'd like. The leather was just a purple black with some grey highlights. I tried to keep most of it subtle and simple.
but for extra wintry chill, I went for a frozen metal look on the blade. Rust to start, with a few bits of clean metal showing through, like I did for everything else. But then I stippled thinned out white onto the blade, focusing on the edges. The final touch got a little breaking bad. Glass powder is great for snow effects, but it's pretty grim to use. Damp cloth to work on, gloves, respirator, and no breeze anywhere near. More stippling, this time PVA glue, some sprinkled powder, and I called it good. which left the wings. Back in the day, I'd planned to use blister plastic, but it just looked artificial, unsurprisingly, which led me to use texture gel because I love the stuff. Okay, blister plastic still features pretty heavily, I admit. I painted thin layers of gel onto the plastic, some with green and yellow inks, even some with metal medium for a little sparkle. The first try stuck to the plastic surprisingly well, so I tried again with thicker layers and smearing the plastic with Vaseline. Those I painted veins onto and stuck back to back, which looked really chunky, so I tried again. The third try was better, but those veins weren't working. So I tried a fourth time. By this point, I'd been doing this for four days because of the gel needing to cure. They were better, and I even test glued one into place, but still too blocky and probably too much ink. Day five, and I scaled it back a bit. The wings were painted to shape, so the edge could be thinner. I started with less ink, adding more after gluing it in place, textured the backside with more gel, and left it at that. Obligatory painter's whinge? Five days. Five days to do two tiny wings. That said though, they were worth it, I reckon. I always enjoy painting freehand fur, and I'm really happy with the colour tone across the whole piece. Does it look like a wintry satyr with summer fairy though? Let me know what you think. <laughs> Watching him go around, I've just noticed I didn't gloss the eyes. Oops. He needs the base still, and I have plans. So maybe I'll see you next time. <laughs>